What's up everyone, Dablade here with another Did You Notice This for Monster Hunter Wilds from Gamescom 2024. The developers hosted their third and final live stream today to which they went over existing information but there were a few little tidbits here and there that you may have missed or that I haven't mentioned in previous videos. So we're going to break down what was shown off into a little bit more of a condensed and bite-sized video for you. So let's dive straight into this shall we? First of all, when it comes to weapons and combat, they showed off new tidbits here and there in regards to the different weapons, their moves, abilities, so on and so forth, as well as combat in general. So they showed off the sneak attack for the bow. The sneak attack, for those of you who don't know, is performed whilst wearing the ghillie mantle, giving the ghillie mantle another utility that hunters can make use of. Additionally, when it comes to the environmental traps in the ground, Additionally, when it comes to the environmental traps found in the world, hunters have to be careful because they can also be affected by these traps should they trigger them. Knocking boulders on your head or, for example, what was shown off, you can fall through the sand traps yourself whilst the monster may not. And sticking with the environmental traps as well, certain traps from certain monsters like the Balahara sand trap, they are not always guaranteed to be in the same spot. So keep this in mind when you're looking for those environmental traps that are linked to specific large monsters. Yes, of course, there are gonna be some fixed environmental traps, but I'm referring to the ones that are related to monsters. Next up, when it comes to turf wars, you may notice that when a turf war occurs against a monster that has a pack or herd accompanying it, the turf war may not necessarily be against the alpha per se. It could go up against one of the pack members as was shown during the live stream. Also, the sound effect of the Balahara drill breaking is just, well, listen. Anyway, moving on, we'll talk about the bow. The bow no longer has coatings, as we've mentioned before in a previous video. However, we weren't really able to see the cooldown meter. Now we were, thanks to the positions of the webcams being different, so we actually got to see what the bow coating cooldown meter looks like, as well as gauge how fast it regenerates. But sticking with specific weapons, the hunting horn was shown off a little bit. Basically was a giant saxophone. And to be honest, Hunting Horn mains may want to check out or slow down this footage because it did show off more aspects when it comes to the notes, queuing up the notes, so on and so forth for your melodies. But a more comic moment happened when Ryozo Tsutimoto tried to go back to a pop-up camp and the monster attacked the camp, showing what it's like when your pop-up camp gets destroyed. It basically means that you cannot hide in your camp to avoid taking damage or reset a monster. I assume this won't happen at fixed camps, this is just related to the pop-up camps. The longsword was also used by the developers today. They showed off the Helmbreaker into a follow-up move, into its focus strike, all looking very fancy and very flashy. It looked very fluid and, to be honest, very satisfying. One question though that has been on my mind in regards to focus modes or focus strikes is when it comes to the ranged weapons, how far away from a monster can we be in order to activate our focus strikes with ranged weapons. We kind of got that answer today because the heavy bowgun and bow were both utilized and it seems that we have to be fairly close to a monster to activate these focus strikes. So no being able to snipe a monster from your distance with a focus strike at all. Speaking of, I know I keep categorizing focus strikes as a universal term for the moves, but they all have individual moves. Like for example, the bow's focus strike is called focus hellstorm. So I hope you can forgive me when I actually just say focus strike. It's more of a blanket term. Now, one interesting thing is that getting out of combat at least in multiplayer, it seems a lot easier. The developers were able to move away from the monster and it seems that the combat ended quite quickly, so long as the monster was fighting other hunters, to which they were easily able to quickly fast travel around the map. Next up, just for anyone who doesn't know already, sliding attacks have made their return to the game. So weapons like the hammer who can make use of sliding attacks really effectively are gonna be happy here. Again, they showed off bombs again and how you can roll the bombs into sleeping monsters, which looks incredibly satisfying. <laughs> On top of that, there was a bit of information revealed about Alma, who is your handler. For one, she will still follow you around, pointing out things of interest. For example, she will point out a severed tail if you cut the tail, if there's a trap, so on and so forth. But when it comes to multiplayer, she'll only follow the host around. Now going back to one of the previous videos, I mentioned that 
I wasn't sure, but mountain attacks can potentially cause wounds on monsters. This was confirmed today. You can open multiple wounds on a monster's back by utilizing mountain attacks. So mountain definitely seems to be beneficial as it will allow multiple hunters to potentially perform their focus strikes. When it comes to defensive aspects in the game, the Leap of Faith is back for anyone who's been wondering. The devs also showed off an encounter with Raydal's sort of nest area that was covered in electrifying static that seemed to cause thunder blight. But there was materials on the ground, such as grounding stones, that could be used to remove this static electricity. It seems to be similar to moss pods and soaking up the water from Namiel that it leaves on the ground. Now, as I mentioned before, every weapon has a perfect input maneuver, whether it's a guard, dodge or parry, and they showed off the bow's perfect dodge, which I, for one, being a bow main, was excited to see. Fans of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak's skill swap dodge, or the adept style in Monster Hunter Generations, are going to be pleased to see this return. Finally, when it comes to the combat points that were shown off that we noticed, the health bar now flashes like a heartbeat and your palico will call out when you're about to take a major hit from a monster's attack. This is a nice indicator that gives you a heads up on your actual display to when a big attack is coming. So if you don't necessarily have your eyes on where the monster is, it gives you a little bit of a heads up. This was a nice change to see. And to be honest, visually, it looked great. I love the little heartbeat effect on the health bar. But some miscellaneous details. Some of you may have noticed that you can have actually up to 26 items in your item pouch. This is not including the vertical items. This was just shown the hunter expanding its horizontal item bar list. Additionally, you can set different options as well for your SOS flare. So it can be used to summon in different combinations of assistance. So you don't have to summon in human players. You could say summon two AIs and one Palico or one human player and two AIs. So a nice little quality of life change, especially if you don't enjoy playing with other people. There was quite a bit of information revealed on the map as well. For example, monsters time limits on how long they will be around was displayed here. So you can check that out to see if a monster is about to leave the area or not. Monsters also have a strength level, which is different to the hunter rank quest level. The monsters shown off were low rank, but they had strength levels measured in pink or purple stars. And the thing is, not all the monsters have the same strength level. What I mean by this is there were two Balaharas, one was a strength level two and one was a strength level three. I'm assuming this means that one will have increased health or attack power, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on, we've talked about this before in one of the previous videos about the weather cycles, but if we're going to get technical, we can talk about their actual correct terms and how the rotation works. Basically, the hunt starts in a period of follow, which is a fairly calm period to which it will be followed up by the inclemency event, which in the case of the demo is the massive lightning sandstorm. Each map will have their own inclemency event, it seems. To which once the storm passes, it will enter a period of plenty, where I believe there's gonna be more endemic life, upsurges, so on and so forth. This will then repeat and the period of follow will appear again, then go back into inclemency and then back to the period of plenty. And the rotation goes on and on. Speaking of the map, you can access it in two ways. You can just quickly tap the touchpad, at least in the case of the PlayStation, to which it'll bring up the 3D map as an overlay, or you can hold it to which it'll bring up the more detailed map for your hunter. Now, one aspect that was kind of exciting for some players was the prospect of being underwater. The devs dived underwater to which there seemed to be a little bit of underwater exploration, but the developers did confirm there is no underwater combat. The underwater exploration did seem limited, but nonetheless, it was still exciting to see. Next up, whilst we have talked about cooking out in the field and getting your canteen buffs on the grill, we didn't really touch on the barbecue rhythm game, which is the normal way of cooking rations and well done steak and such. There is a mini game to it, to which they haven't revealed what the requirements are to get the so tasty comment. And then finally, finally, the developers said that if you have saved data from Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, you will get special gear for your Palico in Monster Hunter Wilds once you get your hands on it. They didn't show the Palico gear specifically here, but I believe it's armor from Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter World Iceborne that your Palico wears. 
But regardless, there's a lot of information here. If you haven't checked out the other two videos in this little breakdown series, please go check them out. And I hope they've been informative, pointing out little details here and there that you may have missed. Of course, if you've noticed something that I haven't said here or in the previous videos, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, I've been Dubblade, bringing you things you may have missed from the developer live stream at Gamescom of Monster Hunter Wilds. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.